Hello everybody to the second round of talks. So my name is Tim Geisler, this is my colleague Heribert Schütz. We are both from WebExerp Software GmbH, a Munich-based company. Um, in the last decade, we worked a lot with product configuration based on heavyweight commercial configuration frameworks. And based on various experiences with that projects, we started to develop a lightweight toolkit for implementing product configurators. This toolkit is based on JavaScript and React and runs completely in the browser. Um, we call this toolkit OpenCPQ. Open because it's open source and open for various integrations. And CPQ is a quite a new abbreviation for configure, price, and quote. So what is product configuration? You all know some car manufacturers. They have some websites where you can uh, select your favorite car. This car manufacturer offers a huge variety of cars. Um, you, these, these cars you can describe with parameters. Each of the parameters has a domain. For example, the type of fuel the car needs or the type of gearbox the car has the type of steering wheel which could be put into the car or the color of the car. And for configuring your car, what you want to buy, you select uh, various values of all these parameters. For example, you select that the car has some electrical engine and there are, of course, dependencies to other parameters and also, so for example, there's only an automatic gearbox for electrical engines and also some types of cars are ruled out which is marked by the yellow uh, by the red crosses um, then for example there might be also some steering wheels not possible for automatic uh, for manual no for automated gearbox um, and uh, you can then also select other parameters like the color which then also rules out further possibilities. So we are, uh, now going, uh, we are now going to show you a demonstration, not uh, with this car example, because well, the major say, effort uh, on these car configurators is to make them really very good looking. Um, that's not our focus. Our focus is to uh, support easy modeling and to have something uh, working which is well, still good looking but uh, is, is not on graphical effects and, and all that stuff. So uh, an example, the example is based on an earlier uh, customer of ours. Uh, it's about optical uh, network switches. So the switches that uh, forward um, your IP packets uh, through the glass fiber wires uh, and the internet backbone. And uh, this is the setting. Uh, so we have several levels of components. So let me start in the middle at the switches. So a, a switch uh, sends around these packets. Uh, you can plug in boards into these switches and then transceivers onto these boards and these transceivers support different wavelengths and then you put your switches into racks and uh, you can build up a solution uh, from multiple racks and we'll show you uh, this in the demo. Okay. So let me show you the demo configurator we built um, for this setting. So the first you can do is to, the, to select the configuration mode. So you can either configure single switches, racks equipped with switches, or a complete solution consisting of several racks. Then let's select a solution. Now you, I can explain the UI of the configurator. So on the left-hand side, you have the parameters where you can enter the values and where the domains are shown. On the right-hand side, you see a configuration result, which is the bill of materials. 
So this is the output of the configurator. It's a list of items, their quantity and their price, which are the components of the solution. There might be also other outputs, but in this demo, this is shown here. Then we have a view of problems, which is currently empty, and we have some table of contents, which shows the structure of the configuration. Now we can sec select parameters, for example, some release, which is valid for all switches inside. You can select the rec type, and you will notice here on the lower side that when I select, it immediately selects the correct rec. You can select, for example, that you want to have for each rec an uninterruptible power supply. You can override these defaults for certain recs and this effect on the configuration. Then let's equip this rack. The first switch we can, uh, we select a switch with six slots where we can plug in boards. And for the first, uh, ah, you see when I select here, I see in the bill of material that we have one of these switches, software for the switch. There's some power supply, some fans, and there are also blank face plates for the slots. Now let's equip some slot and put there some board which covers two slots. This is a double width board and you see here the number of face plates is reduced by two. Slot two is occupied and in slot one is the board I have selected. And then I can configure the ports on the board. For example, I can select transceivers which with a configurable wavelength and I can then select the color of this wavelength. And you immediately see the resulting bomb. You also see in the problems view that it reminds me that I can configure more transceivers for those ports. Let's do so. So I could copy this transceiver, for example, select a different wavelength. I could uh, insert another transceiver. Let's take this one. Let's take 20 of this. Then you see I immediately get an error message. Uh, there are 22 transceivers configured, but I only have 16 ports. So let's retract this choice and select the real maximum value of 14. A uh, little bit too large. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what can you else do? You also see uh, you can, for example, copy complete sub configurations. For example, I copy. The, this optical switch. I want to have two of those. I can change one of those configurations to put there other types of materials. You see here the copied switch. I can even copy the complete rack. And so the configuration goes on like this. Um, the configurator is used by salespersons, so we don't need a very technical, uh, a very fancy UI of that. Um, you can export the uh, configuration result into your favorite tool, Excel. <laughs> <laughs> or you can also export the configuration um, as JSON data structure. This is also the internal representation, and Harry Bet will come to that later. Okay. Okay. So what we've, uh, what we've seen now is... Well, one of the business processes, so there was a user uh, st standing uh, <laughs> in front of a configuration engine and he was editing a configuration. So an answering the question, which particular variant of a product or of a yeah, solution do I want? So the configuration engine actually needs a script. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> First thing <laughs> is another thing. And of course, the configuration engine also uh, produces some additional output, like the bill of materials, prices, and so on. But the configuration engine also needs some description what variants of a product are available, uh, what interdependencies are there, and uh, how is the output, the additional output, uh, to be computed. And that must be implemented by somebody. So typically, that is a modeler uh, who well, either is a product expert or 
is told by a product expert what variations exist. And uh, with the modeling tool, they build up uh, yeah, some complex data structure uh, which describes these things. Uh, now, both uh, of these applications, the modeling tool and the configuration engine, are typically uh, quite complex web applications. And the product model is typically stored in a proprietary format. So, uh, yeah, but, but there are some. Uh, the, the frameworks we encountered in the past for representing the product models, they're often too weak. So they're missing abstraction possibilities. So you have to use quite low-level concepts in your product model and map your company's product structure into those low-level concepts. And when you look what modelers are really doing, they copy and adapt code. So this is the favorite tool they use. And of course, this leads to large models this is an enormous effort for maintenance, so everything is outsourced to India, and the configurator tends to execute very slowly. So this is a bad user experience. Our solution in the past was to still work with this uh, commercial configuration tools, but define a customer-specific high-level modeling language uh, in form of textual models. So you could have your own customer-specific notations like slot or board in the example we've seen, and then have an IDE on top of it for um, making it easier to use and uh, helping the model a lot. So this IDE we built with Eclipse and Xtext, and we had some code generation which generates code of the underlying configuration engine. But on the right side of the slide, everything stayed the same. Yeah. <clears throat> so what's in a product model? The general claim is of the vendors of these uh, configuration engines that modeling is something, well, very specific. It's not really programming. It should be easier. and Actually, for a simple application, for uh, simple products, uh, that, that's true to some degree. But as soon as it becomes uh, more complex, you really need a programmer or someone who is uh, able to think in the same concept as a programmer. Uh, it's simply no more realistic that yeah, say uh, a person who's mainly in charge of the product, the product expert, can just do that uh, by the way. So what's in a product model? We have the product parameters, so data ranges, uh, data types and ranges, so that's like types uh, in a programming language. We have the components uh, that can be composed, so that's like objects. We have dependencies as we said before, and we have the calculation of additional output, which is, well, for us as programmers, most easily uh, written down as some expression or some function calls in a programming language. So, uh, as I already said, models are programs, and, well, modeling as uh, programming provides uh, all the things we are used to, uh, it provides abstractions and data structures, which, as Tim said, are missing in many uh, yeah, modeling tools for uh, existing configurators. Uh, it's hard because well, a model is often just a data structure within some system. It's hard uh, to maintain it, uh, to version it in a, a revision control system and so on. And finally, if you use a general purpose language, general purpose tools, you get a lot of people who would be able uh, to work with that with not that much of a learning curve. So you wouldn't probably get 200 people uh, in a Munich blah blah uh, meeting uh, for a particular configurator engine. 
Okay. So another problem from several customer projects is you have a very bad user experience. So you see this nice little icon for a long time. Um, one reason is you have large models. The other main reason is because you have a distributed client server system, you have to wait for your client server round trips to go through because in almost all those configuration tools, the business logic is running on the server. And you need to be online. Our demo you've seen was offline, so we have no cable plugged in. Yeah, so the idea was why not do all this configuration in the browser? So stop complaining, implement a configurator in JavaScript for this performance reason, and finally JavaScript is actually a reasonable, not so bad choice uh, for the modeling. So this picture you know already changes like this. So uh, the modeler uses his or her favorite editor to write some JavaScript code. You don't start from scratch. We've factored out several concepts that occur again and again in these configuration uh, tasks into a library, OpenCPQ, and then that to the browser, or load that into the browser, and the user does the configuration directly in the browser. So the advantage is now the two main tools are standard components. With JavaScript code, you have really an expressive language and it's popular. And OpenCPQ is really just a lightweight layer, which we're going to go into details later. Um, yeah, so as I already said, OpenCPQ is a library providing the building blocks. Uh, you are supposed to com combine these blocks with JavaScript. You can even add your own building blocks, and okay, that was already said. Yeah. We made uh, OpenCPQ an open source project, so the code and the live demos and the slides are available on GitHub, so when you Google for OpenCPQ, you will find this. Um, we have the MIT license for this, so this is very liberal, and of course you are invited to use that, to contribute that to that to adapt it like as you like. The question is now, how does it work internally? So first thing is about change propagation. So if the user changes some input, say some selection in a menu, uh, what happens? So we start with a core state, so that's just the accumulated user input from that we can compute the full state, so that includes some defaults, it includes some well, new questions that arise due to earlier answers. Uh, it uh, includes these validation messages that we've seen, it includes the bill of materials, and from that we render the user interface. So that's the straightforward approach. So if the user updates the user input, we simply do the same thing again and again. That's one approach. Another approach would be to propagate changes incrementally. So from the user update, we somehow compute an update to the full state. So there we need to keep track of uh, the dependencies and we need to, but we can maybe save uh, some CPU uh, because we can concentrate on the relevant parts and then the same goes for the user interface and again. Uh, the disadvantage of this approach is, as I said, uh, computing the derived updates is, is difficult and, and tricky. So what we are doing is actually on the business logic side, which is anyway not the heavy stuff, uh, we are doing full uh, recomputations, whereas for the user interface stuff, uh, we compute a difference between the previous state and the new state and apply that to the real user interface. Actually, we are not doing this by ourselves, but 
we are using React for that. So what is React? It's a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. It's not uh, a widget library nor a model view container framework, so it's, it, gets, uh, it needs uh, a bit getting used to it. What it does is it maintains a so-called virtual DOM, so uh, a representation of the DOM, but just as a JavaScript data structure. And it does uh, the diffing. So upon each update, user code, and in this case, OpenCPQ itself is also considered user case from the React perspective. It generates a new VDOM uh, from your model. Uh, and React, as I said, uh, takes a, the difference between the VDOM and the previous one and applies this difference to the actual new DOM. So this is the, then the final architecture picture. Uh, so as I said, React is taking care of uh, managing the VDOM and uh, painting it to the real DOM. We are uh, providing you uh, with managing of the state and expanding the state uh, to the some sort of full state. And you have to provide, so if you are a user of uh, OpenCPQ, you have to uh, provide the actual product model using the types uh, of OpenCPQ, which I'll come to right now. So what is the product model? You remember this uh, well, initial uh, view of the uh, demo. Uh, so we have a menu uh, to select different entry points uh, in this case, uh, whether we want to start with uh, switches or with a rack or with an entire solution. And it's being configured, as you see on the right hand side, I'm is it really readable for you? Uh, okay. mm -hmm, up there, okay. <laughs> um, so we just declare that a configuration is a sort of selection. So we have in blue the menu entries. Uh, you always see, you or often see uh, two strings. Well, one is the internal. Uh, label and uh, the internal identifier and the other one is the label uh, for the UI. Uh, and in green you see, well, what else do we need to configure if we choose that particular menu item? In a way you can see uh, this structure as, well, it's a bit like a, a switch statement in a programming language. So this down here, that's pseudocode. I just want to uh, show you the correspondence between uh, the OpenCPQ objects and the programming language things. And that also holds for other things. So we have something that's similar to an if then else. We have something that's just uh, corresponds to a, a compound statement. Uh, we have something to uh, create variables uh, for later use and uh, it's not really necessary to produce uh, this list of cases manually by the modeler but typically well, some product expert puts uh, well, product data down in a well, not so technical way or you have some product data management system uh, where you get your product data from and then well, how to get a UI from that. Uh, well, you can just write some little uh, JavaScript code uh, to fill your select menu. And here, new things, I think it's not even ECMAScript, ECMAScript 6, but 7, uh, these array comprehensions uh, come very handy. So it allows you to specify complex models very concisely and you can use JavaScript as your templating language. 
So now for the state that's you, that you have already seen, the state uh, is just this JSON thing. Uh, the nodes, now you can become to some, uh, a bit closer to React. Um, as, we say, as I said before, uh, a node can render, uh, yeah. a node can, uh, can render uh, this VDOM. So React provides this JSX uh, language extension uh, to JavaScript where you can enter uh, XML or HTML elements or even elements uh, of uh, well, higher level elements which are by themselves uh, defined and will expand uh, to some HTML. Um, so you can interpolate uh, JavaScript ex expressions uh, well, just with uh, curly braces, that makes it a bit difficult to read or get used to because now we have not only object literals and block statements, but also these interpolated JavaScript expressions in curly braces, but you can get used to it. Uh, again, here an array comprehension uh, comes in handy uh, for the, uh, this templating use of plain JavaScript. So finally, uh, say the center of OpenCPQ, the types. Uh, so we've seen before uh, the API functions uh, for creating such a selection and the case here, uh, well, the, C, uh, the, or the, the, the default value for a type is just given nothing to configure. That's uh, well, maybe a technical detail. A type is actually an object which has a make note method that creates a note in the end and its input is a context uh, that contains the state but also an update function. So uh, this updating is a bit peculiar. It, you can also use it to inject uh, well, more data that you need for your application. Uh, a typical example is an aggregator, an accumulator for the bill of materials. So further down, you see, just have these recursive calls uh, to make the subnotes. And uh, the interesting thing now is uh, the update to function that's being passed to the subnote. It does not change the data, but it really returns or passes to the surrounding to the parent update function a modified copy. So it does not really uh, modify anything and that makes undo redo uh, functionality very easy to implement. Um, okay, so we come now uh, to say the uh, summarizing uh, slides. So what are the tools that we are using? It's React, it's Bootstrap. We are well, currently using the less version, considering of uh, changing to SAS, but well, that might be helpful if, uh, to get some input from you. We use uh, widget libraries, React Bootstrap, React widgets. We've switched recently, well, thanks to Axel <laughs> giving us the hint, uh, from React's own JSX implementation to Babel. We are thinking of migrating to TypeScript because we well, are used for well, many years uh, to Java and other uh, strongly typed languages where the IDE can help you a lot. Uh, we switched from Gulp Browserify uh, to Webpack, so that might be something uh, we can tell you if you uh, are interested. Okay, we are also using these things and so then as a summary we you've seen in the application we really took advantage of modern browser technology to implement this product configura configurator application so in particular HTML5 also for this offline functionality and modern JavaScript uh, you've seen that there's very powerful modeling 
based on JavaScript, React, and OpenCPQ. The user interface was quite fast and quite flexible, and we have an open source project for this. You're all invited to use that and to contribute. 